And we are waiting for that to happen. They certainly made a lot of moves in the offseason to try to bolster the offense. And Jorge Soler's gotten off to a slow start. Conforto's had good success here. We take a look at the San Francisco Giant lineup. And they don't score very many runs early. They are currently tied with the Nationals for fewest first inning runs. Last year it was Wilmer Flores, their best offensive player. He's back in the lineup as a DH today. Went deep yesterday. They need Chapman to get, to get to get it going. If they do, then wait on Soler, who has a day off. Could be a very good offense for the Giants. Soler, three for 35 with one homer to start this season. Taiwan Walker is going to be on the mound, and the first guy he's going to deal with is Jung Hu Lee. For Walker, he is one of the five now in the Philadelphia Philly rotation. Spencer Turnbull had been there, and he is in the short term going to be pitching out of the bullpen. There'll be no six man rotation. And for Bob Thompson, the manager, it was never a question about Walker going to the bullpen. He was one of the starters, in his opinion, all the way. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be the Phillies right now when you have yep. choices to make and you have extra starters. But Taiwan Walker is now a 10 year major league veteran and that's no small thing. If you played in the in the major leagues and you've been in a clubhouse, you know, that's a big deal for him. This will be his 200th game appeared in today and 196 start. So, yes, he's a kind of a movement specialist. You see uh, the numbers there in his first start got knocked around a little bit, give up six earned runs. But you can tell he's going well with that cutter sinker splitter combo and the split finger fastball is the one that he gets swings and misses on impeachment on that shoulder that's why he started the season on the il friday night the phillies won it four to three the bullpen came through for them they went five innings gave up just an earned run that was the game in which trey turner scored from second base on a pass ball and came up with a hamstring issue which has got him on the sideline for the next six weeks mention the orioles the phillies they are on top boy did the guardians just destroy the Atlanta Braves, Shohei Otani hit a ball 464 feet today, and then he hit another home run. The Yankees are playing really well, and there are the Braves who went in feeling so good until they dealt with the Dodger machine. The Orioles are pretty good, too. Oh, my <laughs> like goodness. Baltimore's a problem. Look at those two teams. You start to think about the I-95 series in 1983, the Orioles and the Phillies. Perhaps a preview of things to come. Walker gets the ball, set to get on the bump, and Jung Hoo Lee, who's 31 hits, leads the team, tied with Tyro Estrada, steps in, 246 on the season, two homers, seven RBIs, and the first pitch from Walker, that's uh, in there for a strike. Temperature has dropped into the upper 50s now, 59 degrees, and Lee slaps one to left field. Standing in his tracks and making the play is Brandon Marsh. An easy one for the left fielder. He is number one in outfield defensive run saves in the National League and fourth in baseball. And he'll be wearing a microphone and talking with us in the third inning. You talk about not having to move a step. Perfectly positioned. Next up, another lefty, Lamont Wade. This one is hit really hard going back Castellanos and it's over his head fielded beautifully and Wade is going to have one of those wall ball singles. He turned that around at 105 miles an hour. Tell you what Castellanos played that beautifully off that wall off that fence knowing it that it was not going to bounce off the fence that hard played it close and was able to get it on the bounce. Watch this right here chain link fence right protecting the screen. Played it like the former infield he was. Home run last night for Wilmer Flores. He swings at the first one, and they are attacking Walker, and he pulled it foul. Carl, he must be ready to go. Wilmer brought out the lineup card. Did you notice that? That's kind of a first thing for him. Try to change the karma. Karma good for Flores last night as he launched one to left field. Good pitch there. Walker ahead of Wilmer Flores, 0-2. 73rd home run as a giant last night. He's the 20th Venezuelan born player with 150 career home runs. 0-2, oh. and that is called strike three. Edwin Moscoso waited and punched out Flores. 
good looking cut fastball shaving the edge on the bottom left corner. You can see there it's you can almost see kind of the dot and the spin on that cut fastball had a little more depth than normal cutters but perfectly located. And a good shot of Moscoso the home place umpire telling the two guys at the plate what the call was before signaling to everybody else. Swing at the first pitch Conforto deep to center field Rojas all the way back it goes off the base of the wall. Coming around to score is Wade and give Michael Conforto a double and an RBI and the Giants lead it one to nothing. How about the scouting report? Be ready to hit. Another first pitch swing. That's three in a row and this time Conforto does not miss it. Straight away center. I thought Rojas was going to get a beat on this. He checks the wall twice. Almost a Scotty Rowland type play. And Chapman swings at the first one and fouls Aaron that Rowan. back. Aaron Rowan smashed his nose into the fence out there in center. By the way, for Conforto, big time success against the Phillies, most of it as a Met. And he's had terrific success here at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Delivers the first run of the game. Chapman has a swing and a miss on a high cutter. It almost looked like Rojas was planning to go up, up, up and over to grab it. He didn't need to. The ball was about three quarters of the way up of the, up the wall. 0 oh and 2. And that one's a little high. And again, this is a team that doesn't score early. They were tied with the Washington Nationals for fewest first inning runs with nine, and they get to Walker here in the top half. Chapman late there and a fastball at 92. They do get a run. Good news for Logan Webb. Walker walks off with his team down. The fun thing while trapping them in his web with something else. And he takes the mound with a 1-0 lead. Could have been worse if it was Oracle Park for the Philadelphia Phillies. That ball off the bat of Conforto was a home run at Oracle Park, according to Sarah Langs. Yes, including 17 others. And Logan Webb on the season out of those seven starts just a couple of uh, you know maybe uh, mediocre ones within those he's right. not a big strikeout guy but he also keeps the ball in the ballpark very well and doesn't walk a lot of guys. There's that Philadelphia Philly lineup they are top five in basically every significant offensive category in the league. Yeah and don't blink with Kyle Schwarber hitting lead off this guy right now top five when it comes to First plate appearance and slugging 7-10 so far. The DH ready. Webb's first pitch oh. is that to see where you talk about in there for a called strike. The front door to lefties. Yeah, that is when you've got that one going. Think back to Oral Hershiser when he broke Drysdale's record and Greg Maddox. They own that pitch. Tries another one and he misses low. Schwarber, Real Muto, Harper, JT Real Muto, the catcher, moves up to the two spot with Turner out. And the other story tonight, Logan Webb is was going to think about wearing pitch calm, call his own pitches. Blake Sable is now the catcher for the Giants. They've lost two catchers in the last couple of nights. Murphy hurt his leg last night, sprained knee. And of course, Patrick Bailey's out concussion symptoms for the next seven days feeling a little better today they say Schwarber swings at that and pulls it foul. I mean that's brutal Coney and for the pitcher to deal with the third catcher what, what does that do to Webb. You know what, what it does to him is you're gonna have to call your own game and with the pitch clock which Looks like the catcher Sable's got pitch come on. him. Yeah he's probably gonna if I were a pit in Logan Webb's position I'd have my own pitch come just in case if you get flustered that you could you could take the lead. Web ahead one two. Now some pitchers aren't comfortable doing that though yeah. so we're not sure Logan Webb's never done that we know that from from uh, pregame and, and talking about his style he, he generally follows Bailey's lead. Rob Melvin said in San Diego so many of the pitchers Musgrove Darvish I know Michael King now in San Diego all call their own game with the pitch com on their belt. Now Webb getting the signals from Blake Sable. Sales one outside. Get a bat going here for Kyle Schwarber.
Seventh pitch on the way. Got him swinging in. That's a miss. Sable will apply the tag. And this is what makes Webb so dangerous and gets you to go back to the dugout shaking your head. Why did I chase that? It's a changeup. It's got a lot of action in the two seamer, but as a hitter, you're thinking you have to you put yourself in a position for the fastball, for that two seamer, and then this one dives at a slower rate. JT Remuto had a triple last night off the wall in right center. And that first oh. pitch in there, strike one. Fastest catchers in Major League Baseball, 28.8 sprint speed, 28.8 feet per second. That's how you leg out a triple. Way outside. Set the defense behind Webb. Matt Chapman's had a bit of a bumpy road defensively, which is not what you'd expect from the guy that is usually a gold glover. Nick Ahmed's at short. Estrada is at second. Lamont Wade at first. Conforto, Jung Hoo Lee in center. Mike Yastrzemski in right. Another changeup, and he's ahead of Rio Muto. Changeup is actually his number one pitch in terms of uh, usage. 38.9% of the time he throws changeups. 34.6% of the time is the sinker. This ball hit to right. Back goes Yastrzemski. He'll stop at the track, reach up, and make the play. And we talk about the percentage of ground balls against Webb, 49, over 49%. The right-handed hitter, in order for them to be able to hit it in the air, they have to do what JT Realmuto did, hit it to right field. And here is Bryce Harper. Take a look at that second column, a 136 OPS plus. He's got a 933 OPS at Citizens Bank, which is the highest home OPS anywhere of any player since 2019. into the game with six homers. Ahead 1-0. Now 2-0, and he has become a bit of a walk machine, at least one walk in seven straight games, and his walk rate of 18.2% is the highest in baseball. Given a lot of opportunities for the guy in the on deck circle, and Alec Bohm has made many pitcher pay this season. Three consecutive changeups to Bryce. Green light shaded up the middle. Ahmed, terrific glove, and the throw to first is made. Perfectly placed. Harper hit it hard at 108 miles an hour. Right into the glove of Ahmed. Three up, three down. And Matt Chapman's trying hard. Like to see that. And of course, here's Yaz, and he is very active in that as the first pitch from Walker misses away. Appreciate the guys going behind the scenes with the cameras each week, taking pictures for us. Giants got a one nothing lead thanks to a Conforto double off the center field wall. He's Stremski swings and misses. Baseball royalty in that last name. It's like Perez. You know, you're, you've got that label. You got that last name. Mike Yastrzemski's been carrying it around the same way you do with your dad, Tony. Eh? After they paved the way. It's the only way it's that we know. Ran into Sarge Gary Matthews Sr. today. Oh, yeah, he looked great. Looked phenomenal. So in 1983, the year that the Phillies went to the World Series against the Baltimore Orioles. I was actually the first year I was able to be in uniform, and Sarge took me under his wing. Ball strike three. Walker has struck out three. Two of them looking. Yastrzemski and Wilmer Flores. Probably looking for the splitter, and he just threads the needle. A little Logan Webbish there. You can see the ball kind of running a little bit back towards the inner third. Ball one to Tyro Estrada, the second baseman, 254. Five for nine his first couple of games of this series. One, hold it back at the top of the zone, strike one. 
Bohm is at third and Mundo Sosa is at short. Stott at second, Harper at first. Marsh, Rojas, and Castellanos left to right in the outfield. He fouls that one off. Very little wind to speak of tonight at the ballpark. And the next pitch to Estrada is sent to the seats down the right field line. You sure about that? I see none. I see the grandson of the wind playing oh, in the game. Oh, Eddie. There you go. Nothing gets by Eduardo. Just saying. Grandson of the wind. Chung Hoo Lee's nickname. That one misses down. Good take. Well, one thing's for certain, every time we come here, it is packed. <laughs> this is a good place to be right now. If you're a Phillies fan, life is good. For count three and two, one down, second inning. Giants score first on an RBI double for Conforto. You can see the skyline of the downtown area of Philadelphia there in the background. Most of the day, it was in and out of clouds. For 10 minutes, you'd see it. Then it would disappear for 40. Three, two pitch. Got him, but he fouled it off. Yeah, that. Like that just disappeared. Now it's right there. It's well designed. Everything's where it's supposed to be in this ballpark, right? <laughs> Including the, the press food room. It's right over my right shoulder. The best ice cream, too. It's about to say. <laughs> Don't forget that. Everything's where it should be. High fly, playable for Castellanos. Estrada retired. And Ten pitch at bat. Two down here in the second. A lot of a lot of flavors too, which is nice for you guys. This is a long line. You get in line. What'd you go with tonight? I went with the cookies and cream tonight. Cookies and cream. Choco vanilla for me. You went straight chocolate and vanilla. Yes. All right. There were there were other more eclectic choices. Yes, there were. There were. I'm Banana not done cream. yet. I'm not done yet. I'm, I'm going back. <laughs> Our buddy Frankie two scoops is in there. You can't get one two. One of the nicest gentlemen around always welcomes everybody that walks through there. So Blake Sable had an interesting last 72 hours as he's behind 0 and 1 and now one ball and one strike took a red eye from Phoenix arrived early yesterday. And then Murphy, the backup catcher, Tom Murphy, leaves the game with a left knee injury, so he's thrust into the game. Oh. And they lose Bailey and Murphy in a real short period of time. And you asked Bo Melvin about his catching situation, and it was one of those. Ugh. You don't plan for it, that's for sure. Oh. One and two, called strike three for Walker. And he's got four strikeouts, three of the looking variety through two innings. Just right there, just below the zone. Maybe a little shave. Big round of applause as we welcome you back to Sunday Night Baseball for this guy, Alec Bohm. Last 15 games, he's hitting 492 with 21 RBI, the player of the week. Last week when he hit over 500. He'll lead things off, followed by Marsh and Nick Castellanos. Webb's first oh. pitch. There it is. That's the back door to the right-handed hitter. Crazy numbers during the 17-game hit streak. Way inside. He had to get out of the way of one last night in terrible conditions. It was pouring out through the early part of the game last night. The Phillies jumped out to a 9-0 lead and in an effort to avoid a pitch with a big lead, they took him out of the game with some hip tightness. They downplayed any significance to it, given the conditions, probably error on the side of caution, but back in it tonight. Two balls, one strike, and he's done a lot better at not chasing. Foul that one off and a pitch in the zone. This was the swing. You'll see just how nasty it was outside. Oh, look out and felt a little twinge in the hip.
when Merrifield went in to play third base for him. So watch his one sail high. That's a heck of a take right there with two strikes. On the ground, two hopper. Ahmed. Oh, high throw. He slipped. Nick Ahmed, as he attempted to throw the ball, looked like the conditions from last night just lost his footing and air mailed it. Okay, so yesterday with all the rain and today that field has been covered the entire day. It's been raining a lot. They didn't have much time to get this set. Watch his front foot right there just get caught. Cleat, it's not that he slipped. Watch that left leg, front of the cleat. Shuffling, gets caught right there in between. Terrible feeling for Nick Ahmed, so reliable. And now with Bohm at second, here's Brandon Marsh, the left fielder. And the first pitch is outside, ball one. I'm on the first base side tonight, guys. That throw, incoming. <laughs> He'll be wearing a microphone for us. Again, the hashtag ask SNB if you want to ask Brandon Marsh a question, who's ahead 2-0 with first base open and a struggling Nick Castellanos in the on-deck circle. Brandon so much in his legs right now. Spread out stance. Trying to stay behind everything, and so far it's worked. Smothered over there by Estrada that will move Bohm up to third base. Marsh retired. Eduardo, Bob Thompson said Marsh is an entirely different hitter than he was a couple of years ago. Yeah, completely different hitter with the spread stance that he has now. He's able to stay behind. Watch his head. Does not move much. Now that'll cause a little bit more broken bats off the end of the bat. Those are ones that he used to hit the left field on a fly and now he's able to pull it infield in with one out runner at third and Castellanos up. Swings at the first one and that's a pitch way outside of changeup. Fouled off at the plate. Big time struggle for Nick to start this season. 183 average. He's got two homers. 10 RBIs. Overly aggressive early. And waiting to find that groove that last year carried him to a terrific season. Tell you what, with that reaction from Alec Bohm at third base, I don't think he's going on contact. Watch him at third base right here, getting the read. Not a big lead. Let's see what happens now with two strikes. One out. Tying one at third. And did not come in far enough. Saw those numbers last year. This guy led Philadelphia with the 68 extra base hits and only three so far this season. Infield in again on a 1 2. Ball got away and it ended up hitting Castellanos and staying close to the plate. That's a great job by Sable right there. Yeah, that's all you can do, really. Just throw your glove at it. You can't block this one. Slider in the other batter's box. You can do it with a little assist from from the the bat. Boom at third. Here he comes. Castellanos gone on a nasty, nasty changeup out of the zone. Second strike out of the game for Webb. Yeah, the bottom just drops out of it. You see almost the sidearm angle. And when you talk about seam orientation. That's what he's talking about, getting the seams just right, both on his changeup and his sinker, that allows that bottom to drop out to get that tremendous depth and horizontal movement as well. Here's a hot hitter, Bryson Stott, 240 on the season, but four for 10 his last three games. Oh! Takes the first one, it's in there for strike one. Coney, after we talked about Melvin before the game, I thought that what you were gonna see was that Webb would be leading uh, Sable, catcher, but it's going the other way. Yeah, he obviously just doesn't feel comfortable, you know, wearing the pitch gum. 
But for some pitchers, it's, it's hard to do something completely different. And Logan Webb is a creature of habit, very much into his routine, very much into his style of pitching as we discussed with him. So yeah, I mean, that's not something you can throw on and just start doing that unless you feel comfortable with it. I tried it in the booth up here a couple of games ago. I couldn't get it right. <laughs> I'm calling knuckleballs up here. Stott has had success against the Giants. He has at least one hit in all 13 games that he's played against them. And now it is three balls and a strike. Those pitches are well executed. Those are just great takes on purpose. They're set right there. Stay down. Don't let him beat you. Okay, Bundo Sousa, Sosa, the shortstop, is on deck on a 3 1. And that's a walk. Good take. But again, another example, perhaps, pitching around a guy to get to the next one. Definitely did not give in there and stayed down below the zone. And Stott, as Eduardo noted very correctly, he has such a good eye, very patient. So when Turner went out, and it's likely going to be for six weeks, give or take, a period of time around that six-week window, Sosa is going to be the guy that gets most of the time at shortstop. They're not going to move Stott over there. They have Merrifield, who said, I'll, I'll be there if you need me. Inside. That first pitch inside, ball one. Sosa gives him some speed, too. He can, he can really yes. run. Runner goes, and that pitch swung on a miss. They will not throw down, so now in a scoring position goes Stott with his seventh stolen base of the season. That's a pre-planned play right there. No reason why to throw it through. Make Sosa use that bat to drive him in. 280 with a homer and three RBI for Sosa. Giants up one zip. Inside, two and one. has only thrown two pitches so far in this game up in the zone both purpose pitches yes one to Palm the other one to Schwarber in the first inning everything else has been middle down yeah at the knees and down you're right occasional four seamer up look out back right by Webb slow roller on the infield safe at first base an infield hit Holm is in Webb had to worry about the wood coming at him and Sosa's tied the game up. Sometimes you make a good pitch and you get a bad result. And you're right Carl. You got shrapnel flying at you. It's hard to concentrate on making a play. First of all broke it back. Watch your lips. And Sosa's speed pays off right there. We mentioned it before. This sure guy did. can run a little bit. And even though he's jammed out of the box, he picks it up and, uh, yeah. But well, that was scary because that was not far from Logan Webb. And you saw the end result. That's a jagged edge flying right by you. Now Johan Rojas. And Webb oh. settles things down with a first pitch strike. Have that happened before you were? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's scary. Yes, it is. It's unnerving because by the time you release the baseball, I mean, you're 55 feet, yeah. 53 feet away from home plate. Runner goes. That okay. pitch is hot, but no throw down. And Sosa Speed has him in scoring position. The other part of this, Webb, he went to field the ball. If he continued, he put himself right in the line of the flying bat. Watch him hesitate to go get it because of the bat kind of pulled back. Exactly right. Great pickup, Carl. 
fouled off at the plate from Rojas on a change. And it's it. Logan Webb has thrown 42 pitches. This is the nine hole hitter in the order. The Phillies have now sent six to the plate in this inning. And Schwarber, the leadoff hitter, is on deck. Pitch number 43 about to yeah. be delivered here in the second as well. The sweeper is able to get him swinging across it, so he will get Rojas. And that will end the inning. Phillies do tie it up. Top of the third means microphone time. Brandon Marsh after this. Oh, That's hilarious. <laughs> you can use the hashtag AskSNB to ask Brandon a question. Kind enough to join us. One of the great personalities in Major League Baseball. Brandon, thanks for doing this. Hey, man. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Nick Ahmed will lead things off in the first pitch from Walker. So do you truly believe that? Kind of that scruffy look somehow gets <laughs> in the heads of guys like David Cohn, etc.? <laughs> I feel like it gives me a little edge. So when I'm out there, I feel... Wait, hold on. I feel... So I'm now. <laughs> I got a... Uh, you got what? I feel like it gives me a little competitive edge. You know, these guys are really good that we're playing against, so we got to we gotta do whatever we can to try to get it done. Right, what, what was it like going back home to California? Well, can you give us some stories about going back home? Yeah, man, that was awesome, you know, seeing the boys. Uh, seeing the boys that I haven't seen. I mean, I saw them last year towards the end of the season, but it was just a quick stint here in Philly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was amazing seeing the old staff, being back on the old turf. Right. Wait, you weren't li you weren't lying about multitasking, were you? I know. I'm trying. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> Ty's my guy. I gotta, I got I gotta get him right here. Gotta make sure I'm ready for him. But uh, no, going back to Anaheim was great. Uh, you know, good series win. Um, saw pretty much everyone that I that I that I used to see every day. So I mean, it was it was awesome, man. All right, 2 1 to Jung Ho Lee, and that's foul. So you live with Alec Baum. Tell us a little bit about what that's like, how that oh, happened. Man, I'm living with him just so he can rub off on me. I'm trying to hit like him. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> oh, man. No, but uh, no, 2 8's great. He's a. Uh, he's a. Uh, oh. I mean, he's a brother of mine. He's a. Uh, I wouldn't know what I'd do without him here in Philly, man. He keeps me grounded, you know. I think we work well together. Uh, you know, we got the same goals, a lot of the same likes, dislikes, and stuff like that. So, a lot of the stuff in the house goes pretty well. That one's going to get ah. through, and Lee, with great speed, is aboard with a one-out single. Is it a little Felix Oscar old-school odd couple stuff, or are you guys similar in a lot of ways? Oh, we're similar in a lot of ways, yeah. yeah. We uh, uh, we do a lot of the same stuff in our downtimes. Uh, you know, just kicking back, relaxing, enjoying the, enjoying the living room, man. Uh, just... A little 2K, a little Call of Duty, you know the vibes. Yeah, I know. And I heard, I asked him about, you know, who's neat, who's, and he introduced to a third guy, Vondi. He's like, oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, no, we, we get taken care of. Yeah, I know. Vondi, we would be nowhere without that guy. You know, he goes by Veggie Vaughn. Shout out to Veggie Vaughn. He's, uh, he's the man. He's the, he's the glue of our house, man. He's, uh, you know, a man throws it down in the kitchen, makes sure we're ready to go for the day. I mean, I can't think, uh, I can't be more thankful for a guy like him. All right, so we're going to, you know, we asked the fans to ask a question. Listen closely. We, ha we had one sent in, and I want you to listen to it after this next pitch. All question right. from a fan. Sounds good. Let me catch this ball real quick. You All got right. it. Now. One one to Lamont Wade, and they will throw over to first base. Lee's got two stolen bases. Of course, nickname, you know, his nickname, Brandon, Grandson of the Wind. You're talking, you're talking about Lee? Lee, yeah, grandson of the hey, wind. Man. That that play he made uh yeah, center. two nights ago yep. last night. Two nights My ago. Goodness. One one. All right, here's the fan question. All right, hit me with it. Hey Marcy, it's Bomer. I was just wondering if you're wearing your Harachis tonight. <laughs> Baby, these off lights. These ain't no Harachis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, he did not just ask me that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Boss man D-Lo. All right, so for people at home who aren't in the know, what was he asking you? Oh, he's asking me about a song that we play religiously the past couple of weeks uh, by Boss Man D-Lo. It's called Get In With Me, I believe. And he's got a, he's got a pretty iconic line. 
Baby, these off whites. These ain't no Harachis. <laughs> <laughs> that ball gets away, and Lee will stay put. That's a good voice, Brandon, by the way. Hey, I, hey. Lo I love music. I feel like it, it's like the battery to my body. Tell you what, this ball hit Lee in the helmet, I think, if I'm not mistaken, diving back to the bag. Let's take a re look at it again. Yep. Right off the right ear flap. I cannot believe I just heard Bone's voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the speed. Oh. He's to the seats. So you guys are roommates. Vondi helps with the cooking, the cleaning, and yet your lockers are next to each other in the club. <laughs> How about some separation? Hey, we don't need it. That's my brother, man. That's my dog. I go to war with 2-8. I love that. No, I mean, he's great, though. Couldn't ask for a better roomie, teammate. Strike three. Oh, nah. <laughs> Two. Hey, Brandon. Yep. How hard was it to change your batting stance from where you were last year to where you are now? Uh, I'd say it's more of, yeah, yeah, talk, talk, talk. It was, uh, I mean, it was a necessity. I felt like it was a move that I had to make to try to be better for the guys around me. Um, trying to, oh boy. Oh, trying to be more reliable, uh, you know, be more of like an everyday guy out here for the guys and, uh, you know, and I needed to step my hitting up. So, you know, Kay Long and I went to the went to the war room, we grinded, we fought a little bit, loved each other, and now we're here. Yeah. All right, here's the fan question. This one is not gonna be Alec Baum. This is a this is a legit <laughs> question. Yeah, I think it speaks to your musical background and your tastes. If okay. you had to start a rock band, who would you take from the team and what's the band name? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'd take Garrett Stubbs. Yep. I'd take Kyle Schwarber. Let's Here speak. you go. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! I'm there. <laughs> I take Kyle Schwarber. I take Stubby. I take Pache. Oh, what's the name? Yeah, give me a name. Uh, stay loose and sexy, baby. There you go. <laughs> stay loose and sexy. Thanks so much, hey, buddy. Hey, man, thank we you, guys. You're the awesome. best. You're awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. The Braves licking their wounds after the Dodger disaster. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific ESPN, Deportes ESPN Radio. And our coverage starts 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Shout out to Brandon Marsh for wearing the microphone and joining it as well. As Kyle Schwarber looks oh. at the first pitch from Webb, that's at the bottom of the zone. Strike one. And the now very well-known Vondi, who's a former independent ball player, he played with Tom McCarthy's son. T-Mac, of course, calls the games for the Phillies on TV with our buddy John Cruck. And he is Vondi, the glue that holds things together in the Marsh Bohm establishment. We should just go to McDonald's. Oh, I was going to say, we all need a Vondi. Got a, got a chef? <laughs> what is that? Roll some sushi, according to Bohm, too. <laughs> Body fat has definitely changed throughout the years, Capone. <laughs> I mean, you mean glazed donuts are not a good pregame meal? Oh, you want to eat a sinker? I still believe you should. Two and one to Schwarber. Now three and one. Tommy McCarthy says, uh, "Tell Coney he was a pitcher who threw frisbees and dotted." So not only can he roll sushi, he throws frisbees. One hitters count. That's in there. Schwarber stay right here. He's on a little shave. Yeah, you could hear the Phillies dugout, what they thought about it. Or the fan in the front row. That's on play. If it was a fan in the front row, the manager might have been thrown out. <laughs> yes, there you go. That, that's the thing nowadays, yeah. <laughs> Referring to the Aaron Boone ejection from a couple of weeks ago. Torber struck out in the first. This time he holds up, and he will draw the walk to lead off the third. Second walk of the game issued by Webb. The other one ended up on third base. Bryson Stott in the second. 
Here is JT Riamuto. Steps in, hitting 241, five homers, 14 runs batted in. And swings and lines one right back up the middle. Schwarber moves up 90, it's first and second. Nobody out. Tell you what, for a right-handed hitter against Logan Webb, he has the perfect mentality. Stay up the middle the other way. It's the only way you're going to be able to keep that barrel through the zone consistently to be able to do that. First at bat, it was a line out to right. This one, right up the middle. And now a big chance for the Philadelphia Phillies. In a 1-1 game in the third, here's Harper. He grounded out to Ahmed in a hard hit ball up the middle. Punk! So again, in Webb's two bumpy starts, and there have only been two in seven, he was knocked out in the fourth inning against the Dodgers and against the Red Sox. And here he is in a tough spot in the third. Oh. The thing that he has in his back pocket is the ability to induce the ground ball and get that double play. And with one pitch, he knows he can get those two outs. Webb's given up one homer all year. That was to Mookie Betts. on the season a three run shot to Harper that's his seventh and the Philadelphia Phillies now lead it four to one that was the fifth change up that Bryce Harper has seen tonight and this one he did not miss the first time he hit it hard over 108 miles per hour up the middle for a hard hit shot for an out this time he goes down and get it and he knows that it's gone four hundred and ten feet on that home run by Harper and Webb right back at you off his glove slowed it up nice play at second base by Estrada and Bohm is retired Fan's got to make a play also on that one. Fan has to make a play on that one. You are solo. No one is on you. Home run. You had your opportunity. One shot. <laughs> Missed it. Uh, <laughs> saw it the whole way. <laughs> you got, I got it. <laughs> Tell you what, the showman showed up, though. I don't think anybody since he's become a Philly owns their home ballpark more than Bryce Harper owns this park. Hit hard. That's a great sign for Nick Castellanos. Into left field, an aggressive turn, and he will put the brakes on. But how about an 111 mile an hour shot off the bat of Castellanos after striking out his first time up? Not miss it at all. Nick Castellanos came into this game swinging at over 47 percent of first pitches. Did it in his first at bat, and again, right here, showing a base hit for it. Stott bats for the second time, walked his first time up. First pitch is down. So a couple of balls elevated in this inning. Obviously, the Harper homer. Castellanos hit it over the head of Ahmed. Castellano Sable's throw. Not in time. Stole that one off Webb. Three steals so far for the Phillies tonight. They know he's slow to the plate. Sable did all he could on this one. Ahmed saying he popped off the base. And the question is, was that left foot attached? It looks like he is convinced the Giants to take a look at it. Great job by him by staying with the runner, Castellanos. He popped off, but did the other foot get on, the trailing foot get on the bag before he 
the tag can. I think he's got a case. Got to watch the back foot. Right, we see the pop off. I'm not sure there's enough evidence to overturn it. Everybody on right the there. is staring up at the massive video board in left field. And everyone in New York is looking at all those angles to determine whether. The back foot was on the bag with Ahmed's glove on him. If he's safe, it would be Castellanos' first stolen base of the season. Eddie, make the call. What do you got? I think he's out. What about you, Conan? I, yeah, I don't know if there's enough to overturn it. The back, the back foot is what obviously I've said you have to pay attention to him. Well, it is bang bang. There's no doubt the the front foot came off and the tag is there, but that back foot makes contact as well right there. I, I don't see enough to overturn it, but they have better camera angles, uh, obviously in New York. Our umpire and crew tonight on the field here is Edward Moscoso. DJ Rayburn, Pat Amari, Brian Walsh. It's obviously one that's causing some consternation back in New York, given the length of time that this review is taking. Right there. After review, the call on the field stands. The runner is safe. San Francisco loses Carroll. Not enough to overturn it. Now, given the pitch clock, if you're the pitcher, are you okay with that delay because you're not continuing to throw, or are you bothered by it? It's, you individually. Yeah, me personally, yeah, I might have thrown a couple of pitches uh -huh. while I waited. Logan Webb opted not to. He said he was fine. So far, 20 pitches this inning. One and one to start. And he missed badly, two and one. Logan Webb has been dealing with kind of a head cold sinus thing the last start against the Red Sox. It continues to linger, Bob Melvin told us. The Phillies are barreling him up. They've hit seven balls of 95 miles an hour or more with exit velocity and for this inning. Is this more about the Phillies lineup or a laboring web? It's usually a combination of both, but the Phillies lineup is so deep and so good, and they have a great approach. Stop the other way. That's going to get down. Castellanos, after stealing the bag, will score easily. And Stott's got an extra base hit. It's a double. He's been on twice. It's 5-1 Philadelphia. And another one over 100 miles an hour. Tony, you're on point on this one. Great approach. And that's what the Phillies have been able to show this inning. Everything seems like it's been up the middle or the other way. Real Muto up the middle. Harper up the middle. And this pitch that was down the middle. Stop not trying to do so much with it. Trades places with Castellanos. When you look at this Phillies lineup, grinding out at bats, pushing his pitch count up to 66 pitches here in the third. You know, this is a team that's built to win right now. All the pieces are here. Collectively, maybe they're not, not all hitting on all cylinders. Castellanos looks good tonight, finally starting to get into the, yep. the, the average age of this Phillies lineup is right around 30 years old. These are all veteran guys. They police themselves. They, they motivate themselves. They like each other. They are built to win right now. Yeah, certainly in the National League, there are three teams like that. The Dodgers, the Braves, 
and the Philadelphia Phillies. A lot of folks talked about the big two coming in with it being L.A. and Atlanta. It's the big three for sure. We'll see what other teams emerge as threats to those three. The Dodgers put it to the Braves this weekend and the Philadelphia Phillies doing it to the Giants right now up 5-1. All this being done of course without Trey Turner in the lineup. Sosa got into the act with a single and an RBI back up the middle. The Phillies came into this game third in the National League and run scored second in homers and then on the pitching side first in ERA and first in strikeouts. Yeah. It's a pretty good combination. It's a great combination. Top five in Major League Baseball in nearly all the categories. Oh one. Oh and two. Batting average sixth. Homers fifth. Stolen bases fourth. They got three of those tonight. Runs fourth in baseball, on base third, slugging sixth, OPS fifth. Fourth in walks, you know, they grind out at bats. And you've been on championship winning teams, five rings. The leadership is so critical because it's clearly a team that likes to have fun, but you just don't feel like you get to worry about them screwing it all up. Exactly. Let's face it, everyone's talked about this division and the Atlanta Braves has been most of the talk, and rightfully so. But the Philadelphia Phillies have to play with a chip on their shoulder, and especially early on in the season. They knew that they needed to win in April and May in order to be competitive with the, with the Braves. They also have a general manager who's not, not afraid to make a trade or two if needed. And if it comes down to the trade deadline, they're going to add a big arm reliever if needed. You can check that box. That's probably going to get done. The one two and that is pulled just foul. Now Buster the other part of this dynamic too which you know existed in San Diego the ownership here is not afraid to spend money to win. No that's exactly right guys. Yeah that. Yeah, that's exactly right, Carl. Look, it's it's been made very clear here by Philly's ownership. You know, the bottom line is not important to them. They are out for the sake of their fans and the enjoyment of the fans. Here's Dave Dombrowski. Sam Fold had a chance to chat with Sam earlier before the game. He talked about the makeup. And the other part of it, no panic in this group Turner goes down it's just not a lot of concern you know Thompson from his days with the Yankees that's his personality one two he spoils another one Webb on the mound another inning in which he has thrown more than 25 pitches back to back innings up to 73 pitches first time I've seen Dave Dombrowski in a ballpark without the sport coat always has his patented sport coat on it's cold. We had our sweaters on earlier, too. Swing and a miss, and that will do it for Sosa. The big blow comes off the bat of Bryce Harper, the designated hitter. He's been outstanding since he showed up here at the bank, and he cashed in on that one, a three-run shot for number three. The Phillies will lead by four as we head to break on Sunday Night Baseball. Seeing Logan Webb tonight. You know, they're, they're fouling off some good pitches, and the ones he's throwing over the middle of the plate, they're hitting. You know, they're a hot club right now. They're swinging the bats well, um, just making them work hard. Monday is Willie Mays' birthday. What are your specific memories of Willie Mays growing up? I got a million, you know, from his 3,000th hit. That was at that game, still have the ticket. To, you know, I was waiting outside his driveway and, and waiting for him to come out in that pink Cadillac, say, hey, 24. Uh, he was a big part of my youth. Bob, thanks. Carl, back to you. I Buster, there are so many more Willie May stories from Bob Melvin as Conforto sends this one sky high. Bohm and Real Muto look at it in foul territory. It's playable for Alec Bohm. Willie Mays turns 93 tomorrow. 
Whereas he played for the New York and San Francisco Giants for 23 years. 20 times he was an All-Star World Series champ, 1954. Over 32, almost 3,300 hits. Of course, the 660 homers, the multiple gold gloves. 93 tomorrow. Buster, if you can still hear us, the, the story that Bob Melvin tells us about meeting Willie Mays and having him sign something was a really good one, too. That, uh, he, after he got his 1,000th win, he heard that someone wanted to meet him. He went into a room, and, and there was Willie Mays. And he just couldn't believe it, Carl. And to hear him tell that story, he just lit up. Yeah. Signed it. I said, did you keep it? He looked at me like that was the dumbest question he ever heard. He said, of course I kept it. Then I said, did you frame it? He said, of course I framed it. And it's right there with every other significant memorabilia moment of Bob Melvin's baseball life, as it should be. Two pop-ups, Conforto and Chapman, and now Mike Yastrzemski as Taiwan Walker looks to get Webb back on the mound real quick. You guys have both been in this situation given your playing days you know what what one team's going well and you're not going well you know and all of a sudden it's five one fourth last night it was nine zip after two you got to get out of town but they got a game tomorrow yes playing again wraparound series the dreaded wraparound Sunday night's not it come back Monday for more and when you're pitching for a team like the Phillies that scores runs you're confident yeah. like Walker looks right now Sky high Walker Castellanos and Stott exit stage left for Stott and boy a nine pitch inning not what the Giants and Webb needed just what Walker and the Phillies wanted. Eastern Conference second round Bruins Panthers tomorrow night 8 Eastern time on ESPN of the app the road to the Stanley Cup final on ABC will roll on Boston winner last night in overtime they knocked the Leafs out much to the Disappointment, chagrin. Rob Thompson, who was watching, and said he left between the third period and overtime. He lives like four minutes away, and by the time he got home, the Bruins had won it. Pop up on the infield. Sable comes out. Here comes Chapman, and they clear the way for the third baseman. And the Rangers got a win today. Well, that's a helper there for Webb to get the quick out of Rojas. Start at the bottom of the fourth, but now you go right back to the top of the order with Schwarber. He started things off last inning with a walk, followed by a single by Rio Muto, and then a Harper three run bomb. And there is a lot of movement on that pitch. Even more credit to the Phillies lineup for being able to negotiate through all that movement and narrowing him down and making him work and throw extra pitches. Boy, what a busy time for Sable. You see the Giants catcher looking at scouting report information and then going to pitch com in between pitches. Mm. Oh, two to Schwarber. And that ball is rifled down the line. He looks at it and watches it go foul by about 15 feet. That time the fan appeared to make the catch. And getting a lot of high fives in the corner there. Yeah. Yep. Eduardo. That's I'll, what I'm talking about right there with with the guy in front of him blocking his view. Beautifully done. Mouth open or not? Probably. <laughs> Melvin alluded to it, Cody. So you're a pitcher, and I've seen Webb now kind of look out to right field after a pitch he maybe thought was going to be a strikeout foul off. He just did the same thing into his glove with Schwarber. A lot of foul balls to stay in bats. That's what they do to you. That's why his pitch count is up to 80 pitches now. He's just missed with some really good changeups down. And it's as if Philly has gotten count leverage enough to where they could lay off of those pitches. 
Schwarber. This may bring rain. It's up there for a long time. Sable will watch it go into the fifth row. Tell you what, a young girl in the second row was attempting to make that play. Good for her. Those are tough to catch in the fans. It's all about the fans. The Phillies, the Phillies guys have 19 foul balls already, which is why you see the pitch count for one of the better pitchers in baseball at 81. And this one is scalded to center field. Lee has already made one great catch out there in this series. And that one looked a little more routine, but wow, what a route he took. He actually adjusted his route as well. He recognized it halfway, almost broke across and then back. Appreciate this right here. It goes across and then back. Beautifully done. Two down for JT Rio Muto. The most athletic catchers in baseball. The first pitch, he rolls one foul. Speaking of catchers, he hasn't been watching what Salvador Perez has been doing in Kansas City, how well the Royals have been playing. He's not an everyday catcher. They kind of convinced him not to be. And it seems to have really given him a little extra pep in his step. He's been outstanding, and so have they. Gets the strike call. Whew. Bobby Wood Jr. is so good at what he does at shortstop and also at the plate. But Salvi's also doing it defensively. Yes, he is. Buster and I were talking with Whit Merrifield before the game, and Buster asked him, so Bob, he basically said, so Bobby Wood Jr. That was the lead in question. <laughs> and Merrifield said, best I've ever seen. He's seen a few in his. Yeah, the power's starting to come now, too. Yeah. He was a gold glove contender last year at short. Boy, two back up the middle under the glove of Webb. Oh, man, it's going to be quick. Oh, the call is out at first base up here in the booth. Eduardo signals safe. First base umpire DJ Rayburn says Real Muto out. Coney's going to the headsets up here. And they're both right. He is safe. Tony, I think the Giants may have agreed with you. They were kind of slow in their role. Challenging the out call at first base. This one will not take long. I know New York has to get involved, but when they show it on the big screen here, everyone will also know it. Clearly, that this should be a quick turnaround. And you hear the crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. For all, for all the years that JT Realmuto has been in the league, the one thing that has not declined Call as much for him turn, the runner is safe. Philadelphia retains. Is his speed. Still get down the line really well for as much as he catches. No catcher in the in the major leagues has caught as much as JT Realmuto this year. Fastest catcher in baseball, 28.8 sprint speed. And one of the early adopters of catching on one knee, claiming it really saves his legs allows him to retain that speed and stay durable. Harper hit his 75th career home run at Citizens Bank Ballpark since 2019. And he looks one down. Alonso's got 91 at City Field. Shohei at Angel Stadium, 84. Judge, 81 at Yankee Stadium. Max Muncy had three the other day, 79 at Dodger Stadium, and Machado 78 at Petco Park. And then Harper with 75 at CBP. Tony, did it ever bother you to wear an undershirt as a, as a pitcher? Because Brandon uh, Logan Wegg does not usually wear an undershirt. I liked that. I mean, it was cold. I didn't really wear one at all. I see him playing with the sleeve. Non stop, usually almost after every pitch. Doesn't seem comfortable up there. Let's not forget he was under the weather for the last week. 3 1, he gets the call, what appeared to be out of the zone, but it's now three balls and one strike to Harper. And Eduardo, that's not someone who's not used to pitching in chilly temperatures, right? If you're going to pitch in San Francisco, you're, you're going to be accustomed to that. 
3-1. Sends one to left field. And on a line, look out, misplayed out there. Conforto may have lost it in the lights. Harper reaches, and it's first and third. And the giant defense between Ahmed and now Conforto are giving the Phillies some extra outs. You can see the frustration from Logan Webb, and rightly so. It's been that kind of night for him. And Eduardo, I mean, it looks like he lost it in something. Either the lights. I don't know. It wasn't hit high enough. It's, it has to have lost it in something, but unless it had top spin, rarely do you see it from an opposite side hitter there. Hard. Strike one with a sweeper to Alec Bohm. He reached and then scored after the error to the shortstop. Grounded out to second. Been the most dangerous and hottest hitter on the Phillies. One and one. Will Logan Webb be able to get through the fourth inning? John Jelly is in the giant pen. This will be pitch number 94. The ace of the Giants. Another one of those sweepers, and he's ahead of Bohm, and that was an uncharacteristic swing for Bohm given how he's been going. Three consecutive innings of 20 or more pitches already for Webb. Muto at third, Harper at first, and a 1-2, they'll go to first instead. You can't overstate the value, too, of Patrick Bailey to this team, to this staff, a stabilizer behind the plate. Oh. Didn't get the call. It's even two and two. Bailey out. Seven day concussion protocol. He was dizzy when he woke up yesterday, according to Bob Melvin. He was better today. It's a great point. You know, he. It's not just about pitch selection. It's about the trust. Yep. And the anxiety it can it can create on the mound. Already twice tonight, the Phillies have had runners at first and third. This is the third time. The previous two times, they stole second immediately with Harper and Real Muto. Little hesitant, especially with a 5 1 lead. Alec Bohm on a 17 game hit streak. And another good take, not chasing full count. Ricky. I think with the lefty Marsh up and Jelly in the bullpen, perhaps this is the last man Webb faces. 3-2, Harper off, swing and a miss, and Webb gets Marsh. Uh, gets Bohm, I should say, and will not have to deal with Brandon Marsh. They leave two on, both on the corners. The Phillies don't get a run, 5-1. Have the movement profiles Oh, you know, on the yeah, they'll post uh, it on the scoreboards now. Exactly, right now. they'll put it on the scoreboards. I know they ha they have it here in Philly, so I'll be I'll be looking at that um, you know, when I'm throwing. At first, I wasn't a fan of it because I didn't want to know when it was bad. Or you, know, you might get a guy to hit a pop up, and then you realize, or hit a weak ground ball, and then you look up and it said it was a bad pitch. It was like, well, I didn't need to see that. But uh, <laughs> yes. I think the best guys are the ones that can make the the quickest adjustment. And I think in now having that, you can make adjustments uh, a little bit quicker when you, you know, see something that, you know, my sinker or changeup is a little verty or, you know, there's uh, more horizontal than I wanted it to be. And, uh, you can kind of make the adjustment uh, in the moment. Well, during that interview that was conducted yesterday, we just saw Taiwan Walker come inside and he hit Tyro Estrada. So the athletic trainer and Melvin are out there, and that's a dangerous spot to get hit. Looks like they're looking at this right wrist area. Hmm, a hand. Fortunately, he does have padding right there on the back side. I don't know if it hit the knob or just. And then the forearm 
after the knob. Not being contested. First time the Giants have had the leadoff man on, which allows you to speak a little bit about the Phillies' defense. Now, obviously, Turner's not there at shortstop, but Bryce Harper's transition from designated hitter to first base has been borderline incredible. As athletic as he is, how efficient and proficient he's become at first base has been incredible. It really has. He's put in the work. And this offseason, he did not stop putting in the work, and you can really tell it's been an easy transition. Think about the work that Bobby Dickerson, the infield coach, did with Rand and Stott when he moved from short to second, spent some time at his home, kind of Camp Dickerson, if you will, and they've made Harper a very, very good first baseman. Sable gone there. Walker punches him out. Six strikeout of the night for Taiwan Walker. And just quickly back to Webb, because he's not the only pitcher who will check out those numbers that are displayed in the ballpark. We're trying to last now talk about that too. Yes. You know, they, they go in the dugout, and your pitching coach can show you the iPad. You can get any information you want. So that's kind of what I'm curious as to. Each individual pitcher is different. Some can handle information, some can't or don't want it. But certainly it can be a valuable resource for you to make quick adjustments to know exactly what you're doing. There are those numbers on the scoreboard out in right field. That's the batter numbers and you'll see the pitcher as soon as he throws it. Different break numbers. One thing he had trouble with and we mentioned it with Logan Webb is that from a usage standpoint, he throws a changeup more than any other pitch, and that's what we're talking about—the horizontal and the vertical break. So there's a story to be told there, depending on what your norm is, what your average numbers look like, and when you get away from that, what do you need to do to make those adjustments? He butts it foul, does Nick Ahmed. But his changeup tonight—just 20 strikes out of 38 thrown, and only three swing and misses on 17 swings on Logan Logan Webb's changeup tonight—and that's where the Phillies. Right really laid off a lot of really close ones just below the zone and even Webb got frustrated a few times with the strike zone but they were just low and the Phillies either fouled them off or laid off of them. One out one two Philly up five to one Nick Ahmed's the nine hole hitter and that's high. So let's say you're on the mound and you look out and you see vertical and horizontal an 11 inch break vertically and a 17 inch horizontally whatever it may be. What do you want to do. What do you do with that. You're looking for the shape of the pitch, depending on which which pitch you're throwing, whether it's a breaking ball or a fastball or a sinker. Right. You know what what your profile is, what your numbers should like be. Like my numbers should be 15 and 18. Yes. So you then what? Change the grip on the baseball? You, you absolutely can have keys from working in the bullpen with these numbers individually when you do side sessions. How to make quick adjustments? How to get the shape that I want? Whether it's tweaking the grip a little bit or whether maybe it's a release point. You have to know yourself certainly very well to make adjustments. So the hit batter Estrada's at first. They got the strikeout of Sable and now a 3 2 from Walker and they'll go back to first base. And then I wonder how much, let's say Walker, he's given up three hits, he's got six punch outs. Does he care what the numbers say? Does he not want to mess with it? If he looks over his shoulder, you know, that, that can get in the way of a good out. Exactly. Sometimes pitchers don't want to know, they just want to go. Hey. Two, that's a good pitch. And Nick Ahmed caught looking seven strikeouts for Walker. Seven strikeouts and five looking so far, and he's continuing to hit the spots. A lot of movement as a hitter. The great angle right there from JT Realmuto's frame job. So Lee having a typical Lee night. He flew out to left. He singled. He's got the third highest contact rate in baseball. So back to ball skills have been great as advertised. And there he sends one to left field. This sends Marsh back. Still going back. What a play. Brandon Marsh. On the track he takes extra bases away from Jung Hu Lee. Now imagine he wearing the microphone and made that play. Yeah, Young Hu Lee realizing these outfielders are just a little bit better than in the KBO. Look, it's really hard to get the ball in the air against Logan Webb. Bryce Harper did it. 
you see in his plate appearances against Webb tonight? Yeah, we're having great, great plate appearances. We're really, he's really working hard. Now we got him out in the fourth. We had 73 pitches on him after three innings. So we're taking a lot of pitches that are close and to the strike zone, but they're balls. So they're really good at bats. You guys are rolling early in the season, and you mentioned to us this was something you addressed in spring training about getting off to a good start, a better start. What was behind that? Well, just because the last two years we didn't really get going until June. And so I thought it, just to have them aware that we need to, we can't be playing catch up every year because it's not going to happen. So these guys came into camp, they were focused and motivated, and, and they've done a great job so far. Rob, thanks. Carl, back to you. God, Buster, thank you. New pitcher into the game for the Giants. So as he just alluded to, Webb out after four innings. And it's a six foot 11 righty, Sean Jelly. He'll throw a four seam fastball, a change up, and a slider. And already, Brandon Marsh singled against him. Castellano fouls off a 94 mile an hour sinker. Mission accomplished for the Phillies the first three nights. And last night, they got off to a fast start, leading nine zip after two. They Thank dealt you. with the ace of the Giants tonight. And they're up 5 1 into the fifth inning. You can see Jelly's numbers there. He's a strike thrower, only 3% walk rate. Anna Castellanos who hit the ball hard last time up a single stole a base and scored a run. Jelly looking for a ground ball. Stan will take the strike out of Castellanos. Game was uh, out of control last night to the point that Tyler Fitzgerald an outfielder pitched in the eighth inning for San Francisco. Fortunately for San Francisco, it was one of the better pitching performances of the night. He went one, two, three in the eighth inning. Oh. Kelly gets the call outside for strike one. Stotch reads base twice. Oh, man. A little baseball donut. Conan not even focused. Did you see the baseball donuts? Conan? No, I missed that. I missed, the, I missed the fan clapping three times, too, before he booted it. <laughs> oh, that's nice right there. There we go. Oh, I can I can see the seams on those right there on the right. Look at that. Yes, please. All of them. I'd get a grip on that one. D. Buckler for a start misses. Got to go back to John Rush. Remember him? Six foot eleven. I was just looking it up because I knew he was tall. I didn't. Six eleven is yes. Front line NBA centers. Although three point shooters now too. Nasty pitch. Start on a curveball. Gone back to back punch outs for Jelly. Want some MLB trivia? Just ask Siri, what's the longest home run in MLB history? Ted Williams. <laughs> I wonder if it was going to say in the stack cast era. <laughs> yes. Last night, every Philly starter had at least one hit. They got seven hits tonight. Marsh is off first, and that's a wicked Hello. pitch from Jelly again, way outside that, that Mundo Sosa waved at. Tallest pitcher you ever faced, Eddie? Was it Randy? Randy was up there. Uh, yeah, because Chris, I did not face one? Chris, Chris Young. Young? Yeah. Did not, no. It was Randy. 0 oh, 2. Uh -oh. And Marsh going. They'll throw it and nearly throw it away. Got four stolen bases for the Phillies tonight. Marsh just took off and nobody was yelling at the pitcher Jelly to look back and get him. With that being said, even though he doesn't notice till about now, a good throw gets him. Step off, make a good throw.
throw. Nope. Four different players have accounted for those four steals. The way it's gone, Sosa would get a hit and the run would come in. Randy Johnson in the Kingdom. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh the lighting wasn't very good in the Kingdom. No. Talk, talk about fuzz. That was the first time I saw actual fuzz on a baseball coming to home plate. You could hear it coming in. I think if you kind of give a list of the top three most intimidating pitchers, Eduardo. Kevin Kevin Brown on that list. I know Randy's on the list. Kevin Brown was on the list for me. I'll tell you. John Smoltz was absolutely nasty with that slider. It's different ways to get it done. You know, obviously yeah. Greg, Greg Maddox could just carve you up with his craftsmanship and yeah. control, but I'm thinking more crazy guys. Crazy guys, it's Randy Johnson, because all the left-handed batters did not want any part right. of him. And so. he's not crazy, but it's just that like Brian Wilson was gave you that look at the back end of games for the Giants. Brian Wilson did it. You know who did it with a double tap was Rob Men. Marsh will get stranded. Jelly picks up strikeouts of Castellano Braves Mets. That's our game next Sunday night. We'll be at City Field, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. You can catch it on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific Baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. I'm trying to figure out what the Mets are going to be in that National League East race. There's a whole bunch of teams that are kind of right around 500. You're wondering, do they take off San Diego, Arizona? Seattle's been there. Like St. Louis, where do they go? What do the Mets do? The calendar turns to May. You kind of got to get yourself into the into the gate and, and get ready to take off because there are a couple of teams that seem like they're not stopping. The Yankees don't appear to have any slowdown in them. The Dodgers don't have any slowdown in them. Well, the three teams with the best run differential right now might surprise you. Number one, the Dodgers. There's no surprise there. A 59 run differential. Tied for second. The Royals, yep. 45, and Baltimore Orioles with a 45 run differential, meaning right. another team not slowing down. The Orioles, not at all. 45 more runs scored than given up. You just saw an impressive performance they put up against the Yankees at Camden Yards. Backed it up against the Reds as well. Fun team to watch. Royals, fun team to watch. Keep an eye on Taiwan Walker here in a 5-1 game. His first walk issued to Lamont Wade, and now Wilmer Flores jumps out ahead 1-0. Oh. There's a fastball at 89. I always found Walker's delivery somewhat unique. It's almost like he's playing catch. He is. You know, he's he's not a big extension guy. As big as he is, he's kind of a short strider and doesn't really reach out there like Logan Webb did. Popped up on the infield. Sosa. But boy, does he induce balls in the air. Yes, that cutter has been a good pitch for him tonight. Has yet to get a ground ball out in this game. Everything's been in the air on the line. Strikeouts looking five of them out of seven that he has on the night. Nine flyouts, seven strikeouts. And this one to Conforto is in there for a strike. Michael's got five homers on the season. You know, the stat, it's like the curse of Barry Bonds. Since he hit 45 homers in 2004, no giant player has hit 30 in any season. There have been nearly 500 other 30 homer seasons since then. <laughs> Stott, Sosa, double play, end of inning. There it is. He was due. He was due. Get it on the ground, you get two. That's the easy way. Days, a strength conditioning coach, a 21 and a half, and over four days, the same coach, a 25. Now you told me a story of Cole Calhoun. 
Yes. Tell me about Cole Calhoun. So he came in on the early bus on day one and came right back and said, fellas, I have been waiting 10 years for this sandwich, and I got to get one right away. So he came in, he ate his first cheesesteak, and he sat there for about 10 minutes, and just like he was at a bar, he went, yep, I'll have another. <laughs> I wish you guys could scratch and sniff because this is wonderful right now. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Get the reaction. I crushed that one. He, so, dropped, he dropped a scratch and sniff on us, Carl. He did. <laughs> so let me get this straight. He claims that some Washington national player ate 10 of them, 10, 10 and, and a half. half in a day? In a day. That's not healthy. Yeah, you're right. Ten and a half. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess and say that strength and conditioning coach is a former strength and conditioning coach now. <laughs> Call and strike to Rojas on a sinker from Jelly. Oh, we get, oh my gosh, we have names. Oh yeah. So 21 and a half in three days, but he then he had four more. Like he was really just about done, but he had four more because it was 25 in four days. Stand corrected. My goodness. We sold lots of guys right there, didn't we? We gave him up. A late call, and Rojas is stunned. That's four strikeouts in a row for Sean Jelly. Yeah, that'll make the auditor. Pitch down. When you have two strikes, you have to open it up a little bit more. From the angle that he's throwing with the action that he has, and this, you will appreciate this angle and the frame job. zone is the box. What happens when you get a strike call outside the K-zone? What zone is that? That'd be something you can you the come buffer, up with a name. The buffer zone. The buffer zone. <laughs> Major League umpires are not graded by the box you see on your TV. They're, they have a little bit of a buffer zone. East and west. It's more of an oval shape, the strike zone. One to short group. One and two. 95 mile an hour. And sinker moving away from the left hand of hitting Schwarber, who has reached once tonight with a walk and scored a run. Part of a four run third inning for the Phillies. Just to let you know, in the seventh inning, we are supposed to be getting some more cheesesteaks. Strike three, five in a row for Sean Jelly. No doubt about this one. Yeah, he's going to go back, look at that one on the iPad, and you'll see that that one had all plate. This one's got 18 inches of horizontal break. It started out inside, looked like a ball the whole way, and then jumped to the inside corner. You know, the first guy I really saw master that pitch, I mentioned before when we were describing Logan Webb sinker, was Oral Hershiser. If you think about 1988 when he broke John Drysdale's record, that was the pitch that nobody had really seen a lot before. He just blew away the league. Greg Maddox as well, all the way to the Hall of Fame with that pitch we just saw. And now you see uh, pitchers emulating that style, and I really believe those two guys were trailblazers, and stylistically speaking, in that particular pitch. Maria Muto in the hole. Chapman, long throw, and no, here's JT Riamuto speed again. He has got three hits tonight. So Trey Turner gets hurt. Rio Muto up to the two hole and a three hit night. It's a great athletic play. And I'll tell you this nine out of 10 catchers in this league, they're out. Yep. Just happens to be the one. Yeah, Rio Muto might be the best athlete on the field right yeah. now. Here's Harper already with one big home run tonight. Swing like he was looking for another one, and that's fouled off against Sable. Oh, my goodness. The giant catchers cannot catch a break. Mm. 
That'll leave a mark. And Patrick Bailey, seven day concussion injured list. The next day, they lose Tom Murphy, knee injury in the second inning last night. Calling it a sprain to his knee. And that is out of play down the third baseline. Go back to the best coverage in today's game, the Bryce Harper home run. T-Mobile multi shows Webb's pitch and center stage. Oh. <laughs> and Harper gone there, Sean Jelly. How about Sean Jelly? Six punch outs since he's come into the game. Harper gone. All right, fellas, Bryce Harper's third inning homer. Anthony out there had clapped several times because he had a beat on it. He's got it. He's got it. And Anthony doesn't have it. It smelled like a Buster interview. And now it's now it's becoming reality. Buster? Yeah, so I'm here with Anthony and his son, Mason, who's 10 years old. It's a sad story. Please tell us. <laughs> I'm trying to catch the ball, and I missed it. It's my own fault. <laughs> well, they saw you clapping your hands together. Tell me what was going through your mind as you see the ball soaring toward you. I was trying to reach over my son and kind of tripped over him a little bit. I just didn't catch it. So, Wait, yeah, it's kind of my fault. I should have called it, but not too much I could really do. What kind of reaction did you get from the fans around here? Did they feel bad for you? Yeah, like the people around me kind of felt bad, but other than that, they're like, oh, how'd you drop it? How'd you drop it? <laughs> What do you think of your dad's attempt? It was good. He tried. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Your son with some solace right there. So tell me about coming to games here. How many games have you been to this year? Uh, this is our second game. So my buddy got us tickets for the seats and then happened to get a home on ball kind of almost. <laughs> but yeah, that's it, really. Well, your second game here, have you ever caught a ball? At any point during the course of your lifetime? No, I never really got the chance to. That was the first time. So, yeah, that's it. If you had to do it all over again, what would you do different, including the possibility of bringing a glove? I would have brought a glove and kind of moved him out the way a little bit more. <laughs> so, <laughs> but nah, he probably would have called. I should have let him try to catch it. All right, Anthony. Yep. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Carl, back to you. He's a good sport. You feel for Anthony. He, he could just tell how badly he wanted that to give to his son. Yes. Classic Philly accent, too. That, that's yeah. a real deal right there. There we go. Good on his son. He tried. I like how Buster said, besides bringing the glove. <laughs> Well, Taiwan Walker fellas kind of lost in the offense is the idea that he's pitched into the seventh inning here. He just got the fly out of Chapman and now Yastrzemski. And it also speaks you know to the efforts of Farhan Zaidi. He brings in Bob Melvin. There's a number of moves they make in the offseason including Solaire. They bring in Chapman late. Blake Snell of course. And yet none of them have really clicked. And you look and see what the Dodgers are doing and the Padres just acquire a rise from the Marlins and he makes an immediate impact with a four hit game. And a one hopper stop knocked it down and he picks it up and throws and good speed from Yastrzemski and he beats it out. Not hit hard off the bat 86.3 miles per hour but it catches him in between decides to take a step back and wasn't able to put the leather on it. And that brings up Tyro Estrada be a part of the action like never before cast your vote for MLB player of the game voting opens after the sixth inning of every game at MLB.com slash POTG terms and conditions apply. You have to go find out what those terms and conditions are. They'll give a hit to Mike Yastrzemski. And that's the fourth hit for the Giants tonight. Again, the Giants. That ball is smoked to left field. Did Estrada get it? He sure did. Two-run shot. Tyro Estrada. Phillies up off the mat. 
And it's 5-3 here in Philadelphia as the Giants get a big blast from Estrada, his fifth. See that exit velocity of 101.9? It sounded beautiful off the bat. Good launch angle over 30, 32. That should be it for Walker, but this just a fastball that stays up. And as soon as he hit it, what a great feeling after being hit by a pitch. Next at bat, you go deep, drive in two. He is six for his last 11 in the three games here. And Taiwan Walker gets stuck in the seventh and comes out of the game. Lefty Gregory Soto in now, Taiwan Walker. Austin Slater pinch hitting and he got hit by the pitch. Soto out of the bullpen. First pitch he throws. Then Slater gets plunked. Tying run now coming to the plate for the Giants. Just hung on. You know, it's like it's like a snap hook off the first tee. Right yeah. here for, for Soto. He just hung on to it. Soto looked down on the mound. Both literally and figuratively, he was down on the mound. Then he looked at it. That high ERA now in trying to protect a two-run lead. Nick Ahmed. That's a ball down, 1-0. and oh. Tyron Walker in his first start allowed three in the first six innings and then gave up three in the seventh. He gives up two here in the seventh, comes out of the game. And boy, Coney, as a pitcher, a uh, two-run shot can kind of buzzkill a good night. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the competitor that he is. You know, we mentioned before that earlier this year he officially became a 10-year veteran. Well, he's been around the block, and he knows what that means. 95 on the black. That's a strike to Ahmed. The nine-hole hitter with one out. Giants right back in this ball game. After an Estrada two-run shot, his fifth. Now with 19 RBI on the season. Way inside, 96 miles an hour. And three and one, top of the order. Jung-Hoo Lee, who's hit it hard a couple of times tonight. Next man up for San Francisco. Ahmed holding those hands really low from the stance. You rarely see that. Doesn't have a hitch or anything. Brings the hands up and got beat on that 3-1 pitch. Nick Ahmed, three for his last 30 with eight strikeouts in his last 10 games. 3-2, and he walked the nine-hole hitter. And now the go-ahead run in Jung Hoo Lee comes up for the Giants. It's the life of a reliever, you got to come in and you got to throw strikes right now. And you got to make quick adjustments. Otherwise, he can get away from you in a hurry. And you can feel the anxiety in the building, building. Here is Lee, great contact hitter. Ball one. It's the same miss. Kind of hanging on to it too long. Your arm is in front of your body. That's the ball flight doesn't lie. Sometimes you're missing in the same location every time you know what you're doing. You got to slow down your lower half. He does there. That's the knee breaker. He throws him a slider. That's another way to do it. Good job by JT Riamuto there to make that call. That's one way to slow yourself down. Throw a breaking ball. Austin Slater at second base. Ahmed at first. Next pitch. Lee fouls it off his foot. I would imagine that that pitch, when you throw a strike, you see the reaction of the hitter. It calms you down on the mound. Yes. Sometimes for a hitter, it's just one swing, and you get that feeling back. For a pitcher, it's the same one. The one-two to Lee. Stayed alive. Very effective. Jeff Hoffman is up in that Philadelphia Phillies bullpen. Good looking up cam on a fastball inside. Popped up on the infield. He got him with a slider. 
Infield fly rule is in effect. Lee is out. I wear a few different hats as a CFO. You know, sometimes it's referred to as chief fixing officer. Whatever hat CFOs like Imran need to wear, Sage has tools and insights to help them knock it out of the park. Sage, helping business flow. Real Muto out to talk to Soto, and it is Lamont Wade who is due up. He singled in his first at bat, then came in to score in the Conforto double. It gave the Giants a 1 0 lead. Coney, you talked about slowing the bottom half. This time, Soto quick pitches Lee. And Lee, who's only missed on 8% of two strike opportunities right there, goes no stride, gets that foot down, and is able to throw a strike again with the off speed pitch. Gets him out in front. Gets a big out. Yeah, right off of 96 on his fist, the previous pitch. Good one two sequencing right there. So left on left, Soto and Wade. Wade 0 for 3 in his career against Soto in the first pitch. Poured in at the top of the zone at 97. Feels like that one pitch he got called for a strike has settled him down. Another quick pitch there, and he's ahead 0 and 2. Giants have two in the inning on the homer by Estrada. Can they punch a couple more across? Out of play. It's a team that needs something to just jumpstart the offense, make them feel better about themselves. Three runs or fewer in their last nine games. And Wade, a little squibber to Bohm. He'll pick it up and step on the bag, and that force out will end the inning. Tyro Estrada's two-run shot makes it a two-run game. Bottom seven coming up from Citizens Bank Park on Sunday Night Baseball. Hey, Marcy, it's Bomer. I was just wondering if you're wearing your Hirachis tonight. Maybe he's off lights. These ain't no Hirachis. <laughs> So you guys are roommates. Bondi helps with the cooking, the cleaning, and yet your lockers are next to each other in the club. <laughs> How about some separation? Hey, we don't need it. That's my brother, man. That's my dog. I go to war with 2-8. I love that. Okay. If you had to start a rock band, who would you take from the team, and what's the band name? Hanna! <laughs> I take Kyle Schwarber. I take Stubby. I take Pache. Oh, what's the name? Yeah, give me a name. Uh, stay loose and sexy, baby. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. Cut four gets right into it. The newest Philly rock band, Stay Loose and Sexy. <laughs> By the way, Stubby is the chief vibe officer in that Philly clubhouse. He controls all the tunes in there. Yeah, and Marsh just continues. And again, a huge shout out to the players who are willing to do that. It, it's such a wonderful way to see the personalities of these guys. He was phenomenal. And a long list of guys on Sunday night who have done it and allow the viewer at home to just get a feel for what I mean that guy who wouldn't want to play on a team with Brandon Marsh. I couldn't agree more. You know, I, I was involved with the Players Association for the better part of my career. And we always talked about promoting the players, promoting the players. And that's all we're trying to do. Give you a different look, personalities behind the ropes. Right. And how good is that personality? That guy really phenomenal. He jumped right to the All Star list and the All Microphone. <laughs> the All Microphone Hall of Fame. Taylor Rogers in, and that's going to be an extra base hit. Who else? Alec Bohm continues a torrid pace. Came in hitting almost 500 his last 15 games, and he delivers a double. Well, one thing that he's been able to do during this pace is hit lefties really well and pitches down really well. He went down to get this one for another extra base hit. 13 doubles on the season last year with 30, 31 doubles. And 
with that hit he's extended his own personal hitting streak to 18 games and now his roommate tries to drive him in Brandon Marsh Take a look at the hard hit leaders in 24 and Marsh is right on the list with Olsen, Otani, Soto, Sano, Alec Bohm, Brandon Marsh. A one two combination extending the lineup that already has Schwarber, Real Muto and Harper. 58 percent. That is Statcast powered by Google Cloud. I mean, those are some thumpers. Marsh is right in the middle of it. He gave us some great insight too with his work with Kevin Long. Who's yeah. Kind of a legendary hitting coach at this point in his career. I watched Kevin Long work with Robinson Cano with the Yankees for years. And exactly what Marsh is doing now getting into his legs, getting the barrel out in front a little more. Second broken bat. Well, Marsh hardly ever pulled the ball before this year, really. His, his power was the other way. But Kevin Long really talks more holistically about getting into your legs using your body working with individually with each player with what their skills are and he absolutely helped Robinson Cano take it to the next level with exactly what he's doing with Marsh right now. Well the Giants have gone through another catcher remember they pinch hit for Sable so Jackson Reitz is now the fourth catcher and ultimately the last four or five days for the Giants. A two hopper off the bat of Marsh. Bone moves up. Marsh is retired. Great job. He'll get some high fives for that right there. Tough lefty on left. Good job. Even the fanatic likes it. What did he say to us between innings before he wore the microphone? Like, do one for the boys. Like, he felt like he was, uh, in that first time, he grounded to the right side to advance the runner. Yep. How important that was. You know, and it started last year. Let's not forget Marsh had career highs last year in hits, runs, homers, RBIs, walks last season. So you're continuing to see the guy grow and grow as a hitter. Here's Castellanos. And the bender stays too far outside, 1-0. and There's Marsh talking with that hitting coach Long. Well, Marsh said, well, first we fought, and then we came to an agreement, and right. now he's got the full buy-in. Rogers, the left handed twin brother for the Giants. First one out of the pen tonight. Insurance run down there at third in the form of Bone with one down and a 2 0 pitch to Castellanos. During his slump, there have been a bunch of swings like that, Eduardo. Yeah, and that's, that's guessing right there 2 0 guess. You're thinking he's coming back with the fastball and he just commits early. You're not trusting your hands right now. It's a bad place to be in. And then add insult to injury right off the shin. So, you know, you go to swing at a, what you think is a fastball and you get the sweeper and hit it off your leg. Ryan Walker, the righty, warming in the giant pin. Buster, you have a little more on Jackson Reitz? Yeah, he got word about an hour and a half before Sacramento's game last night that he was going to be needed here in Philadelphia. So he jumped on a plane quickly, went through Chicago, connected uh, on a red eye, and got here at 1030 today. Oof. This is someone, Carl, who was a third-round pick of the Washington Nationals in 2014. He spent you know, the most of the last decade in the minor leagues. He had one cup of coffee uh, in the big leagues and played a game in San Francisco for the Washington Nationals. So he's very excited for this opportunity. 3 2 pitch. Called strike three. Castellanos for the third time tonight strikes out. Caught guessing. Gives him a 2 0 sweeper, a 3 1 sweeper, and then he sits on a 3 2 sweeper and he gets the sinker. Paint at 93. Yes. Looks like the Fanatic got caught sweeping as well. Strike one to Bryson Stott. He's reached twice. 
as the Phillies look for a little two out magic here with Bohm down there at third base. Big time break on that sweeper in there for a strike. Giants didn't use a lot of their high leverage guys last night because of the blowout situation. And they have their best arm still available tonight. That one missed away. The Phillies have had a number of chances to extend this lead. They've left seven on tonight, including five of them in scoring position. Stotts made a habit of going the other way with pitches. One, two, check swing. No, sir. He is gone. That's another strikeout and a good job by Taylor Rogers. Head to the eighth inning of a two run game on Sunday Night Baseball. Live action game changing moments. ESPN bet. That's where you go. The official sports book of ESPN. New users get a bet reset up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Scan that QR code right there. Download the app. Get started today. What a play. Minus 1,800 currently. The Phillies with an 89% win probability here. One of the reasons it's so high would be Jeff Hoffman who's coming in. He's been dynamite. Took him 15 pitches to strike out the side Friday. And that first pitch is just why. Paint on the lower half of that strike zone for strike one. He has struck out 12 of the last 20 guys he has faced. Fifteen innings through 16 games an ERA of a buck 20 with a strikeout rate of 37 percent. Flores Conforto Chapman in the eighth inning. And he finds himself now behind as he missed bad with a slider. The best count to hit 3 1 3 1 pitch. Ninety six he got his pitch to hit. Had a teammate of mine named Rico Rossi in Puerto Rico. He told me play for the Royals and he told me he said look I'm not a great hitter but one advice that they gave me was if you think three one the entire time you change them in your mentality at the plate. It really helped. And then he paints 97 for another punch out. He got strike one, got ahead, fell behind, and came back. Up and in for the jam shot on 3 2, on 3 1, and then paint down and away. One down for Conforto. The, the whole count leverage thing. Well, people, it's an even count if it's 2 2 or 1 1. No, it's not even count because the pitcher's got an extra pitch to work with. Four balls. Hitter's got three strikes. One ball, one strike. So you'd say this is an even count? No, it's not. Pitcher still has the advantage. Right. An even count for the hitter is 2 1. And the advantage the pitcher gets when he is ahead 0 and 1 is enormous. This ball hit well, right center field, going back, Rojas still going back, right at the track, he makes the run, no he doesn't, dropped it. And heading to third is Conforto. And he is in with a triple, unless they call an error on Rojas, who looks like tonight he could have made two great plays in center field and instead hasn't made any. That would have been an extraordinary play by Rojas. This has to be a triple. Right here going up, covering an unbelievable amount of distance. Sees where he's at. Understands that the wall's approaching. Takes a peek right there. I 
87 right by Chapman. Cody, to your point, both of his jumps right at the wall, they don't they, they haven't been fluid. Yeah, he he got there. I mean, tremendous speed. Yes. He got there, just couldn't close. And he went a long way to get there, but twice now, one off the glove and one underneath the glove. And both hit by Michael Conforto. The double in the first inning, and here the triple. What a spot for the Giants and Chapman. 0-2. Oh, 1 and 2 at 96. What do you think, Carl? Mouth open or closed? In Eddie's world, it's probably going to be closed. I mean, heck of an effort. The wall definitely has to do something with that. Yeah, too high degree of difficulty type plays. And he's got that kind of speed and range to get there. Yeah, he's looking at that glove, talking to it right now, saying, okay, maybe if I tighten it up a little bit. Two balls, two strikes to Chapman, tying run. Swing and a miss. He threw him a slider. And a big second out, second strikeout for Hoffman. Just kind of collapsed him. The high slider kind of fooled him just enough. You watch his front leg break down just a bit. I'm telling you, for the Giants to be successful this year, that man has to be able to hit. He and Soler have to be able to slug. And he knows it. He has struck out 14 of the last 23 guys he has faced. 0 and 1. That's down. One ball, one strike to Mike Yastrzemski. We don't have an identified closer per se. Alvarado, sort of the A close guy, but they have other options. This is Stremski sends it back behind home plate. Suit up this season at MLBShop.com, the largest selection of official jerseys, caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. That's inside, outside here on the field. Yastrzemski behind Hoffman, one and two. Stays alive. Eduardo, to your point about uh, them needing Chapman to hit, look, the Giants were aggressive in the offseason. Really, only the Dodgers spent more than they did. But so far, San Francisco, without a return on investment from Chapman, from Solaire, from Blake Snell, they're hoping for better. One, two, he got him. Another filthy slider, and look at the emotion from Hoffman as he flexes his way back to the dugout. He strikes out Flores, he strikes out Chapman, and he strikes out Yastrzemski. President, why not? Crocker enjoying a nice Sunday off. I was talking with him last night. He was a little chilly here last night. He wasn't pleased. He didn't like to be cold. He wasn't running warm last night. He was running cold. If you don't like John Crack, you, you're doing something wrong. You know, you're, just, you're missing the point. The Giants, new pitcher into the game. That is a strike. Brian Walker, you can just see, by the way, that he is throwing crossbody. He's a tough, tough at bat, especially for a righty. Like that. Looks like he's trying to throw it to the dugout with where he's stepping. It's interesting, and I'd love for you to explain this to me. Why does he step on the first base side of the rubber and not on the left side, on, on the third base side of the rubber? It's, it's, it's hard to negotiate your release point. Mm. Wow. Yeah, look at that. That, that's, now that's, that's a sweeper. <laughs> what do you got, 23 inches of vertical down? Yes. Horizontal, 23 inches yeah. of horizontal. Woo. Yeah. 23 inches of horizontal movement. Call that a slider, okay. It's about the break. Three inches more drop than average, too, as well as the horizontal sweeping action on it. 
the problem is, is when you land that far across your body, it would be hard if you're on the third base side of the rubber to, to hold on to the ball long enough to get it in the strike zone. And being on the first base side of the rubber and landing across your body, you, it gives you a little more margin to be able to negotiate your release point and get it somewhere near the strike zone. That's why people who throw across their body are better off on that side of the rubber, generally speaking. The 0-2. Yep, they're throwing down to third base. Caught looking is Rojas. Be remiss if we didn't talk about one of the biggest and best stories in baseball right now, and that is the University of Georgia redshirt sophomore Charlie Condon, who today homered in his seventh straight game. He's got an 18 game hitting streak. It was the 33rd home run that he hit on the season and very likely the number one overall draft pick as Georgia swept the Commodores or Vanderbilt. And boy would it be a cool thing to see that guy Charlie Condon play in the NCAA postseason and if they can get there the College World Series in Omaha. You see the left fielder run into the wall like he thought he was going to get it? <laughs> Out of nowhere, kind of under recruited. Georgia brought him in. He's a kid from down there. Charlie Condon is a huge story in baseball. Eight straight games with a homer, 33 in all. That's his uh, coach, Wes Johnson, said, I've never seen anything like it on the field, and I've been around some special players. He's as cool as a cucumber off the field as he is on it, and a good story. Congrats to Condon, Georgia, the Dogs, on his current hit streak and homer explosion. You homer in eight straight games at any level? Not even in Little League, Carl. Really? Not even in wiffle ball. No. Backyard. Mm. Impressive Ryan Walker. Some ridiculous looking stuff there for Mr. Walker. Sosa Rojas and Schwarber all gun. 7 8 9. We go to the ninth on Sunday Night Baseball. You try to hit. It's 13, 139 99. Not 13. That'd be really, really low. 139 99. Blackout, other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. So we talked about Condon, his home run streak at the collegiate level. Bohm's extended his hitting streak to 18 games tonight. And Michael Jack Schmidt, company here in Philadelphia. And now Alvarado on the mound trying to close this one out. Bottom third for the Giants up here. Side. By the way, 11 of the last 12 outs that the giant pitchers have gotten have come by the strikeouts. How many strikeouts tonight? Yeah, they've had 35 at bats. They've struck out 17 times, and they're in a position to win this game right now. 17 strikeouts collectively. And there to a strike, two balls, and a strike. Strada's got a home run tonight. Bohm in even with the bag at third on the 2 1, and he fouls that off. Way inside, count goes fully through him with a cutter. Big pitch here in the ninth. Down two, trying to get the leadoff man on. He follows off another one. So the Alvarado entrance and many of the closers, kind of the Edwin Diaz thing. We got a light show, we got different music. It's a vibe. 
think the best scene right now is probably in Minnesota. Yes. Colorado ready on a 3 2. And this one is playable. Harper back. Stock says, I got it. And the second baseman makes the play. A couple of Vegas guys. And it's the second baseman, Stott, making the play. Love that Bryce wants it, but then he realized, wait a second. That's not my ball. Well, this night's red-eye guy is Jackson Reitz. Last night, Sable flew the red-eye in and played in the night game, and now Jackson Reitz took the red-eye and Reitz bats. Ball one. He's 28 years old. He's six feet, weighs 205 pounds. Let's see what his numbers were in Sacramento. And Harper will give it a look. Out of play. Big leagues, one for two. The one hit was an extra base hit. It was a double. Sacramento's going to get a partner next year, aren't they? Here they are. Major League partner. How about the reaction of the little guy, the fan in the stand when that ball sailed right by Rio Muto, right by the umpire Moscaso, and right to him. I didn't expect that. The wake up call. That ball is smoked to left field. Welcome to the show again. Reitz out of play with a homer, and it's a one run game. Ooh, that was 106.5 off the bat and an absolute no doubter. And he knew it too. That skip. That was fantastic. Little Reggie Sanders type look right there. <laughs> Going back in the day. Bob Melvin has to love this. Ooh. First big lead home run. He just floated around the bases. <laughs> What a story again as we told you found out yesterday late that he had to get here to Philadelphia. He gets on a red eye through Chicago shows up here this morning inserted into the game and a homer. I guarantee you that fan that caught that ball has no idea that that was Jackson's first home run in the big leagues. Somebody call him and let him know. San Francisco hat. Yes. Chance Jackson gets that ball back, you hope. And yes, he was wearing a glove. Nick Ahmed with one down and then back to the top of the order. Giants have shown some great fight tonight. Ahmed is gone. Razor blade cutter at 93 miles an hour. That's a strike the whole way. Look at it coming at you. It's a strike until it's not a strike. It's a strike out. Ball one, Jung Hu Lee. Giant win probability down to 3% with one out to go. Lee almost that off. 98. He's trying to make it three straight. They'll have a game tomorrow against these Giants and win their 24th of the season. Lee, this one to right. Here comes the right fielder, Castellanos, and he's there to make the play. And the Phillies make it five in a row. Reclaim the top spot in the National League East and the best record in baseball. They've won nine in a row at home. That guy right there, Harper with a big blast, and the celebration is on at the bank.
You look at that third inning and the Phillies capitalized and it was Harper. You mentioned it but it's the personality of this team that will continue to grind out at bats. And that's exactly what they did against Logan Webb. Taiwan Walker was sharp. He it pitched was. well with the lead. Got knocked out in the seventh inning, but a good solid outing from him. They'll go with Wheeler tomorrow. Zach Wheeler as they try to finish off the four game sweep. For Eddie, Cody, Buster, and our entire crew, including Andy, back in the studio. I'm Carl Ravage. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sports Center with Kevin and John starts right now.